Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa sallallahu ala rasulillah. Welcome to Face to Floor. I'm Brother Ali, and inshallah, today we're going to do another segment from our series called Our Way, and this one is entitled Our Way and Our Passing. Uh, the Creator, Allah, revealed in the Holy Quran, Kundu nafsin dha'iqatul maut which means that every self, every one, will taste death. Death is a reality that all of us will inevitably face. And the one who is wise, they, he or she, would make the necessary preparations for that transition. Uh, currently, I'm in uh, Central Florida, in Orlando, at a state park, and MashaAllah, being here, it's a little bit after sunrise. And being out here in nature, it's a reminder that there is a Creator absolutely and that the Creator controls everything. And being that it's early morning, it's, and we just prayed a little while ago, that we went from the night into the day and then we will go from the day into the night. That Allah, the Creator, is the one who creates these different transitions and these different phases that we pass through. Allah Ta'ala is the one who created us, who gave us life, and, and then we will transition from this life to the afterlife. And then after or less till, till we die, we will live in this life for a period, we will die, and then Allah the Creator will transition us to another state in the afterlife where there will be resurrection. So likewise in our daily existence we arise from a sleep as if as if in a figurative sense we are resurrected. We go from a state where we are in the dream world, the, the dream realm and uh, different different states of consciousness. Then we arise to this plane of reality and then when the evening comes, as the day transitions, by the normal pattern of things, as the day transitions, also we eventually transition to sleep, and then again we will transition to wakefulness. And that is the same pattern of our lives overall. That we were, before we entered, before we were, uh, before we entered the souls, our souls entered the wombs of our mothers, and we were in that state, then we were in the womb, then we were born, and then eventually we will live on this earth for a while, and then indubitably we will die, and then we will be resurrected. So these are the transitions, and if we reflect upon that, and we reflect upon the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it, it leads us, uh, the, the, the reasonable person would recognize that there has to be a creator. The, the universe isn't making itself, did not originate itself from nothingness. That there is a creator who exists. And that the ultimate objective of the human being should be to worship the creator with sincerity. It is revealed in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُمْ جِنَّ وَالْإِنْسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Which means that Allah, the creator, has created the jinn and the humans, and they have been ordered to worship Him. Uh, the jinn, as we've mentioned in other lessons, they are beings that, if you wish, interdimensional beings. Uh, many people worship them, many people will call them gods, for example. Uh, so what, what, a, what, is, um, what people may encounter in what they call paranormal activity, the jinn are frequently involved in this. Uh, so the jinn are a, an intelligent creation like the humans, but they live in a different dimension from which we live. So as Muslims, we recognize the existence of these beings, but we are not superstitious about them. We don't worship them. We recognize them as a different, as a creation that is different from us. But they're not deserving of worship. They are, they are beings like we are with intelligence. Um, but the verse, going back to the verse, it means that Allah, the Creator, has created the, the jinn and the humans and they have been ordered to worship him. And him, when we use it in reference to God, it doesn't mean that Allah, the Creator, is a, a, a physical being or a being with a physical gender 
words, but it's a means of speech. So let us always keep that in mind, that the Creator has no shape, has no form, has no dimensions, and the Creator is not, a, is not, um, is not embodied in, eth in anything. The Creator is not, of, not like anything we can imagine. So the, one of the golden rules of the Muslim belief in God is the saying of the Nubian scholar, uh, Bunun al Misri, in which he said, Mahma tasawwarta bi balik, fallahu bi khilafi dalik. That whatever you imagine in your mind, Allah, the Creator, is different from that. This is the Muslim belief. We don't worship objects, we don't worship images, we don't worship nature, we don't worship forces of nature or aspects of nature, we don't worship the, the moon, for example, we don't worship the sun, we don't worship the earth. We worship the creator of all of this and we understand that the creator of all of this has no beginning, existed before the creation and absolutely does not need the creations and absolutely does not resemble the creations. So this understanding, having the proper understanding about who God is, who the creator is, this should be the first objective of the human being to know the truth about who created me, what is appropriate to believe about my Creator and what is inappropriate to believe about my Creator, so I wouldn't believe it. And also to know part of this understanding or the, the, that the person should have is to know and understand that the Creator sent prophets. These are men whom Allah uh, endowed with divine revelation they are men of the greatest virtue and integrity. They are all truthful and intelligent. They are brave and, and honest men of integrity. That they, they received the divine revelation, the wahi, and they conveyed it. And that they are our paragons. They are our examples that we should follow. And they informed us, among the things they informed us, is the proper belief in God. All the prophets came with the same belief in God. The fact is that there is one God, there is one Creator. The, the true belief about the Creator is one. God does not change and the true belief in God does not change. All the, all the prophets came with the same command, worship the Creator and not any of the creations. Worship the one who has created everything and does not need or resemble anything. In addition to teaching us about the true belief in God, the prophets also told us about how to worship God. What do we need to do while we are in this life? As we said, this is a stage of transition. This we this life is not our end. Is not the end of our of our being. This is a transition phase that we are passing through. And as, when we enter into the state after this life, as we enter into death, as we transition, as we make the great transition into death that there are things that we need to do in this life to prepare us for that transition. And the prophets, may peace and blessings be upon all of them, that they informed us about what you need to do, what we need to do to prepare ourselves for that transition. And we prepare ourselves for that transition through obedience to the Creator, to know how to worship the Creator, how to pray, for example, how to fast, to learn about what are the, the rules and regulations of how to manage our body so that we don't use, for example, our hands or our eyes or our feet in transgression to the divine laws of the Creator. So the prophets, all of them came with the same belief, worship the Creator, not the creations, and they came with laws that were appropriate for the people of that time. The first prophet was Adam السلام, and after him there were many prophets including, including Prophet Nuh, Prophet Noah, Prophet Abraham and later prophets including Prophet Moses, Prophet Jesus, uh, his name is Isa in Arabic and the last of all the prophets Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon all of them. So the prophets informed us not only about the laws but also about the events, the divine laws the prophets informed us about. Also they informed us about the events of the afterlife, meaning after, what I mean by that, after death. After we die, we are interred in the graves and our souls return to the bodies and we become conscious again. We are aware of what is going on around us and different events will occur while the person is in the grave. And 
those events will occur or those the events that occur are contingent upon the belief of the person so the one who is a Muslim either he or she is going to be in one of two conditions either they are among the righteous Muslims and if they are among the righteous Muslims they are guaranteed without any doubt that they will enjoy bliss and pleasure while in the grave and for those Muslims who were disobedient they transgressed the laws of the Creator then some of those Muslims they will be forgiven by Allah Allah is Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim that Allah will forgive some of them and other Muslims they will be tortured for their transgressions and then there are those who who heard the truth but they did not accept it. and those people who are what we say Islamically accountable they are saying pubescent and they heard the truth they heard the message the basic message of Islam there's no creator or no God except Allah Muhammad is the messenger of Allah those people who rejected the truth and they were accountable then they will encounter severe suffering and misery and torture in the grave and th this is one stage and then after then another stage it will come to us is that we will be brought back to life and, and resurrected our in in body and soul we will be resurrected so the wise person he or she would, would, would ponder and think well what is the ultimate purpose of my life the ultimate purpose of life is to worship the Creator, having the proper understanding of who the Creator is. Meaning, again, as we mentioned earlier, to understand what befits the Creator and also to understand what doesn't befit the Creator. And to understand that the Creator has sent prophets, men who conveyed divine revelation, who received and they conveyed divine revelation to the people. And, and this is our way. Our way is a way of preparing for our passing, that we are going to pass through this life. This life is like a, is like a portal. It is like a gateway to a great beyond of, of, beyond, of the great beyond after this world, after this world that we are familiar with. So the wise one, again, would think, well, okay, there, I did not create myself. I did not bring myself into being. When I look at myself and I look at the natural world around me, it, the reasonable person concludes that there has to be a creator. And the one who created me deserves to be obeyed. The one who created me deserves to be obeyed. And I would express, I would show my obedience to the creator by following the divine laws of the creator. So in summary, we as human beings in this short life, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that this life, this, the life of this world is like you would enter the front door of a home and then you would exit from the rear. That this life is a, is a, is a transition stage and that we need to prepare for the hereafter. And that there is a creator who created us, who owns us, and the creator does not owe us anything at all. The Creator does not owe us a breath of air. The Creator doesn't owe us a sip of water. The Creator doesn't owe us a morsel of food. The one who created and has sustained this universe deserves to be submitted to, to be hum the ultimate submission and uh, humbling of oneself. That is to worship, to be worshipped. The Creator deserves to be loved, to be feared, and to be worshipped. And this is our way. This is our the way of the Muslim is a way of obedience of humbly of, of humbly of being humble and 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 submitting oneself to the one who has created us and to treat others the humans and other creations to treat them with justice not to violate the rights of the human beings nor for even for instance the animals that the muslim lives or should live the, the obedient muslim lives in obedience to the laws of the Creator with sincerity, seeking to be to earn the reward from the Creator with the hope that one will attain safety and salvation in the hereafter. Because there is no doubt, as we said, that we will pass from this world. That our passing is inevitable and that the wise, the wise thing to do and what the wise people do is that they prepare for their leaving, their transition from this world. 
I, I advise you and I advise myself to, to live a life with sincere obedience to the Creator. And, and that obedience begins with being a Muslim. The person, if they are sincere and they want to attain salvation, they need to believe as Muslims believe, meaning to believe properly in God and to follow the laws of the last prophet and messenger who was Muhammad. And the one who is not Muslim, they enter Islam very easily. They simply say, with the desire to be Muslim, I bear witness, nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah. I bear witness, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. Again, one would simply say, with the desire to become Muslim, I bear witness nothing is worthy of worship except Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. May Allah grant us guidance and have mercy on us. For more information, please check us out at face2floor.wordpress.com, and also you can subscribe here at our YouTube channel, face to floor Praise and thanks be to Allah, and the Creator knows best.